Oh, Rocky, tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, please. Um, creating compelling content that converts. Um, it's kind of like field juice, field juice, field juice, and you just wish that all your content would just be everywhere where it needs to be. Um, and something that I wrote about on uh, yesterday morning when I woke up as one of my posts was, on my Facebook page, was how business owners, everybody's wanting to outsource their words to content writers. And this kind of freaks me out a little bit because we really do need to know how to communicate to our ideal clients what it is that we do. We, as the business owner, we're in the best position to be able to do that. But often we're just stuck or we don't have the skills to be able to communicate that successfully in words. So we really need to develop that skill. Um, and once we develop that skill, then you know what? Creating content on your Facebook is not that daunting. All right, so the eight fundamentals. I always talk about the eight fundamentals. Everyone who's heard me talk, they're gonna go, oh no, here she goes again. But to tell you the truth, if you do not get these eight fundamentals right, you will fail on social media. It's as simple as that. And if anyone wants these slides, I can send them through to you. Number one is you have to know who you are. Um, personal, that, that is, that's your personal branding. And people always want to brand their business, but social media is social, which means it needs to be social. And people buy from you. So if you are involved in your business and if people are actually going to work directly with you, your personal brand is very important. Number two is you have to know who your ideal client is. So if you say that your ideal client is everyone, well then you really need to brain dump the hell out of that. And I can say myself and Leanne have had a few wines with my feet up on a couch trying to come to terms with that a couple of years back. Um, it was an absolute nightmare. Um, and wine does help. <laughs> but, um, but you have to come to terms with, with what this is because you've got to know who they are so that you can solve their problem. And if you say everyone, well, it's too fluffy. And so if it's fluffy, it doesn't work on social media. So number three is stalk your competitors. And this isn't so that you can copy your competitors, but it's so that you can see what they are doing and then you can notice your points of difference so that you can stand out online over and above them, okay? From stalking your competitors, I do this with all my clients, they can see what they like and what they don't like on Facebook, which then gives them an idea of what they want to create for themselves as a brand. So it really does help you to be able to do this. And you've got to know what other people out there are doing. Uh, branding consistency. So everybody thinks that this just relates to your colors and your fonts, but it also relates to your key messaging. That means the words that are coming out of your mouth. Like Leanne said this morning, there's so many people, what was it, 22 times or something that, 24? 22. 22. 22 times people have got to see your stuff. And the reason is there's so much noise and everybody is scrolling. So in order for um, them to actually stop and look or recognize it, it cannot be, it can't change all the time. There has to be consistency from, a gra from your branding graphic wise, like your images, but there also needs to be branding consistency in your key messaging. If one day you say that you like ducks and the next day you say that you like dogs, your ideal client's going to get missed messaging and then they're not going to choose you. They're just going to go, ah, oh, it's too hard. Um, number five is have a strategic plan. So you have to know what your overall intention is. What are you hoping to achieve? And what is the action that you're going to take to get an outcome? And guess what? If you're not taking action, you're not going to get an outcome. And if you're not getting an outcome, then the action you're taking is wrong, so you need to change your action. All right? So number six is the R's. Um, there's five R's now. that have expanded R and R and R and R's. Um, number one is review. You have to review what it is that you're doing. You've got to look at what's working and what's not working. And then you've got to make changes. So you have to look at your insights. Number two is respond. You actually have to respond. So many people I know go and put things out on social media and when they get a lead or they get somebody inquiring or engaging, which is the whole purpose of social media, they then don't respond. So it's important to respond. Uh, referrals, meaning that you've got to know how to give and get or accept referrals. And that would be somebody tagging you or you tagging someone on Facebook. You have to be comfortable with doing that. Number four is recommendations. So what strategy do you have in place to get ongoing recommendations, which is social proof? Because people want to see what other people say about you. And the last one is reputation management. The amount of chaos that I have to deal with often because people do not have a crisis or reputation management plan in place. 
Meaning that if the shit hits the fan and somebody trolls you, do you know how to block? Do you know how to de delete? Do you know how to hide messages? Do you know, do you know how you're going to deal with that situation before the next minute your entire page is completely trash? Um, and number seven is get them the hell off social media as quickly as possible. So the whole purpose of there is to nurture those relationships on Facebook, but you've got to get those people off. So what is that process? It needs to be an easy process. Is it booking them into a call? Is it taking them to an email? Are they filling out an inquiry form? What is the process you want to take them on? And it needs to be simple. Um, so that are the two things. They buy from you right now, or else they're not ready to buy from you right now, so how are you going to capture the email? And number eight is having a professional online presence. Um, meaning that you cannot have multiple profiles. You cannot have a dodgy profile. Like Dean, when I found Dean a year ago, you cannot have your ass, your naked ass, all over social media and expect to be... <laughs> and he thought nobody could see it, but everybody could. Um, so it is important that you go on and actually stalk yourself. Because if you're a man in this room, chances are you've set up multiple profiles. Because men, for some reason, when they go to log in, instead of logging in, they actually create a whole new profile. <laughs> It's a man thing. <laughs> so you've got multiple profiles. Go and have a look. You need to delete those profiles because else you have all these profiles and people are trying to tag you and they don't know what's going on and they're not going to trust you. Okay, so you've got three seconds to get a yes from somebody on your page. So when they get to your page, these are the things that you're going to do to get yeses from everyone, okay? People have got to know you. So they want to hear your story, your why, and your business backstory. Number two is they've got to like you. So they need to be able to connect to you, connect to your values. This means you've got to know your clients and you've got to be community focused. Number three is people need to be able to trust you. And then we spoke about the consistent key messaging that's coming through. And developing the relationship, not just online, but offline as well. So getting them into a call, meeting them for a coffee, you've got to get those leads off as soon as possible in, off Facebook. I had a business coach come to me, she sells a $10,000 program, and she wanted to, she said, I don't want to have a call, I just want people to pay me 10 grand. And I said, well, you're not Tony Robbins, it's not going to happen. So you've got to be able to earn the trust on, uh, online and offline as well. Number four is educational expertise. So you have to show your expertise over and above everyone else. Share your knowledge, did you know, statistics and Facebook lives are a great way to do this. In saying that, if you do not have a strategic plan when it comes to your Facebook lives, Facebook lives can break your business. I see it all the time because everyone tells you to go and do Facebook lives and you just go and do it and it's um, um, wishy-washy and it's got no plan, it's going to amount to nothing and in fact it can actually damage your brand. So Facebook lives need to be done properly. Number five is your credibility. So what qualifications do you have? Show your awards. Are you, you know, do you, are you registered? Do you have licenses? How many years experience do you have? It's important you show your credibility. Social proof, again, this is everyone else, not just what you say about yourself, but what is everyone else saying about you? Because people need to see that in order to get trust uh, to work with you. Um, uh, number seven is brand awareness. We've spoken this a little bit about this. This also includes your pitches, and we're going to talk about pitches a little bit later. Um, points of difference. What is your point of difference over and above your competitors? If you don't know that, you need to go and brain dump that. Your unique selling point. Your unique selling point, and it needs to handle objections. So, for example, if you only work online, you need to make those people feel comfortable with working with you online. So whatever their objection's going to be, you have to handle that. So you, you need to know what that is. Uh, unique value proposition or your niche. You need to have a desirable program or package that solves your ideal client's problem. Because you will get a yes from them straight away. Oh, yep, that solves my problem. Yep, I want that. So that is why you've got to know who your client is and what it is that they want and create a program around it. Many people who come to me are creating programs that they enjoy doing. But it's not the problem that their client actually wants them to solve it. And this is why they're not actually getting the deal. It's just if they reframe that package and reframe the title of the package and, and make it according to what the client actually wants, they're going to get a yes from them. So pitches. Um, you know, elevator pitch design. If you get an into an elevator and somebody gets in and you've got a few seconds or a minute or so just to say what it is that you do, it's the same on, on Facebook or on social media. You have to pitch in order to get the gig. 
There are people on there going, hey, I'm looking for this person. Hey, I'm looking for a mortgage broker. Hey, I'm looking for that. And you know what? There'll be 50 to 200 people commenting. So in order for you to get the gig, you've got to make sure that it is short and direct. It cannot be fluffy. Gone are the days of fluff where you try to be a little evoke too much curiosity that no one actually knows what you're doing. Like give yourself some title that no one understands. The first two sentences are the most important and they need to hook or grab the person. There is so much noise online. Um, it's got to be condensed with the most important ideas or concepts. And it needs to include your unique selling point, unique value proposition, your niche, your point of difference, and it must have a call to action, which we're going to talk about too. So deliver it in, you, in simple language. The good thing about social media is it's social. Literally, it can be a conversation just to answer um, the pitch. Consider, consider who the person is and what it is that they want. And you're going to refine these. I have hundreds of them sitting on my phone all in notes, so therefore I can copy, paste, and, and put them in. Um, when delivering a pitch, remain flexible and adaptable. Um, and develop the pitch showing genuine interest in helping the person who's asking for it. So the reader's got to understand the information, they mustn't misinterpret it. Um, and if your pitch stands out and it solves their problem, and you've given them a call to action, they will inquire, okay? And you'll attract your right client. I can send this to you, Neil, if you want. Um, so this is how you co construct a post. So every time you construct a post, this is the formula that I use. Number one is a heading, okay? The heading has to call your ideal client so they stop scrolling. So you've got to think soap opera magazine. You know those magazines at the, at the tellers when you're walking out? It would, like, makes you pick up the magazine and have a look. That's what you need. You need a dramatic headline that's going to stop your ideal client. Number two is a pain point. Identify with their pain so that you show that you know, you understand what they're looking for, so that you connect with them. Number three is offer them a solution. So you show your expertise and how you can actually solve that problem. And the fourth one is a call to action. And this is so important because so many people don't do call to actions. Um, a call, people need to be told what to do, okay? Book here, go here, do this, do that, message me. Register here, read my reviews, download my ebook. This is part of your strategy. Where are you taking that person? FOMO is important, so fear of missing out and having a time base so that they are compelled to take action immediately. So available for the next two clients only to message me now, or um, private message me now and the first five will receive 10% off. So there needs to be um, a time-based call to action that's going to get them to take action now, because else they go, oh, I'll do this later. I'll, I'll go do it later, and they just scroll through, and guess what? Later never comes, and they find someone else online, they've got a call to action, and they, and they go, oh, that's easy, and they, they opt into them. <coughs> so these are a few of my favorite things. Um, six free resources. So on Apple, uh, iMovie, which is great um, for making movies or editing your videos. Canva is great. Um, Bitmoji, you'll notice I've got a little Bitmoji of me. That means I don't, um, don't have to have pictures of me all the time. I can just use my Bitmoji. But again, that resonates with my brand. If you're a professional business coach and it doesn't, res you know, it doesn't suit your brand, then I wouldn't go with that. Uh, Word Swag is pretty cool. You can use it on your phone. Um, and Perfect Video is another one that you can use on your phone. You can literally put together still images or video and create little videos on there. Um, and stock free images, which you can just Google. How many minutes do I have? How am I doing? It's got two. Yes. So, this is super cool because I'm just about to launch my online program. So, my online program means that. Um, you can basically, it's self-paced and people are going to be able to work through my entire course uh, with, it's got video, it's got workbooks, it's got everything and they can work through the modules. We've added in absolutely everything, so I'm so excited about this. So you're literally the first people to see it and you on Facebook. <laughs> um, so it includes my 14 day Facebook content challenge. It includes everything to do with niche and Facebook Live so that you can do them properly. There's also scheduling calendars, um, as I said, finding your niche, which is incredibly important. There's a workbook that comes with it. There's actually a few other things which we haven't added on here yet. Training on the algorithm, because that's so important that you actually understand how to use it. 
Um, but more importantly, what's really cool is we've now attached do-it-yourself Facebook ads and there's a whole 10 module series which has been added to this program, which is super cool. Where's my last slide? That's really weird. There is another slide. One more slide. Yeah, it's weird. Um, so the last slide is actually how you can connect with me. So if you haven't done it already, you can go on to Chantal Gerard and Facebook Strategist, like my page, you could leave me a recommendation. You can, always, you can also join my free Facebook advertising group, which is called Free Facebook Marketing. Join it, advertise your business in there. I do have a couple of rules. Um, but I'm not strict at all because I really want you to be able to <laughs> I'm not I'm really not because I really want people to go in and just feel comfortable in a group space marketing <coughs> their business so I, I've actually created it for my clients to actually practice inside there because else they go into other groups and they get nervous about it and they end up doing the wrong thing and they get scolded uh, I tell you some of the group admins are like Hitler seriously so um, it's a safe place that you can advertise your business um, and the next training that I have is actually this, more in detail, not this, but creating compelling content that converts. And it is on the 7th of November, I think at 11 o'clock in the morning, Brisbane time. Daylight savings, it's killing me at the moment. I have to say Brisbane time for everything. Um, and it is $17. It's an hour of training. Uh, and on top of it, you get a whole whack of bonuses. You'll get my 14-day Facebook content challenge. You'll get the Facebook Live cheat, cheat sheet. So you're actually getting a whole whack of stuff from here, including my ebook, um, when you do the one hour training session with me. Um, and it includes the follow up call so that I can answer any of your questions. So, does anyone have any questions today? Could I ask the cost of that course? That... This online course? I can't tell you because I haven't got it yet. Okay. <laughs> free, free of charge for the first person. <laughs> I can't tell you. I have no idea yet. Okay. We're, we're still putting together a few more things, and it's the online stuff, the back end stuff that's holding me back because yep. that's not the stuff I like. <laughs> so I'm still working on that. But um, I think it's going to be about $1,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're just trying to work out. Um, one of the things I'm passionate about is me still having that one to one with my clients. So um, I think how, and, and don't quote me on it, but I think how it's going to work is you'll have this entire course self-paced and then in there you'll get three, three times that you can actually book a one hour one-on-one hour one -on -one with me, um, which is really exciting. So therefore you can, whenever you get stuck through that call, you'll get a one-on-one -on -one with me. Yep. Um, so that's what we're looking for, that's what we're busy creating at the moment. Um, any other questions that I might have an answer to? <laughs> Anything else? Um, so yeah, with regards to um, other social media channels, I thought some of you might ask, but you didn't. When it comes to other social media channels, you know, content is one thing, but you have to respect each platform. So if you're on LinkedIn, if you're on Twitter, uh, Google My Business or Instagram, you need to make sure that you take that piece of content that you have and then put the right content in the right place. So you've got to modify that content so that it follows the rules of that platform. Um, and and that it's really that easy. I have a question then. Sure. So I know there's there's um, tools out there that you can put content up and it'll go across all social sure. media. You wouldn't recommend that because it's well, they don't really pitch. like. You know, Facebook has its own scheduling tool. Okay, so it has its own scheduling tool, um, and Facebook doesn't really like any of the platforms. Don't really like outside providers coming in and doing it. So it really is up to you. I would say. If you're really not going to do the content, then rather use an outside scheduling tool. Um, in saying that, I don't like to bulk, bulk do my, my content. I've tried doing it before, and what I find is you actually get flat. If I sit there for an hour and try to do an hour's worth of content, guess what? I start getting sloppy and lazy, and I end up putting a sentence in instead of three or four. So I kind of prefer to, when I do my content, come from a place of inspiration. So during the course of the day, if something has happened to a client, you've just had a success story with a client or you've had something, then go and create that content and put it up. It literally takes you two seconds to do it. Um, so I say treat it like a diary, but, but that's how I like it. I do have clients that bulk do it, um, but yeah, sometimes I find that by the time they get to the third or fourth one that they're actually scheduling, they've, they've already, because people struggle anyway with one piece of content, never mind now trying to do a whole week's work. Um, but that's just that's just me. Thank you. 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 Th
All right, no worries. As I said, I'm happy to give flick these slides across to you. So if anybody just, um, if you just give me your business card, maybe at the end of today, and then I'll just um, send it out to you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Hey, Ryan.